All right, so I have the studio lights turned off. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn off the master breaker for the whole house. You're gonna hear a quick click and a little bit of a blink. Here we go. That's how fast it transfers over, that little dinky blink. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rick and I'm a heating, air conditioning, refrigeration technician that also works on home standby generators. Generally, that's what my channel is all about, me making repairs on that kind of equipment out in the field. And that's the reason why EcoFlow reached out to me to do a comparison video between their brand new unit here, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra and the home standby generators by Generac. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, I usually do repair videos on the repair of Generac generators where I've got a misload of different problems that I run into. So I thought this video might be kind of interesting to put together for you. So today what we're gonna be doing is going over what the key features and specifications of this unit is, what you can expect in the box, some of the other accessories such as the Smart Home Panel 2, and discuss the Power Insight tablet that's also available. Let's get started. Now when you get this behemoth in the mail, you're gonna to have to put it together. Now, just so you know, this top inverter here weighs about 72 pounds, and our battery section down on bottom weighs about 116 pounds. So first we take our right angle plug here, which this is really nice because it doesn't leave wires hanging all over the place. And we simply attach it here at the top and at bottom. We just align it there. And there's really no way to do this wrong because if you flip it around, it won't fit. And on the side here, we have a locking nut, which you could secure it by putting a screwdriver in there and simply turning it a quarter turn to lock it into place. That locks the actual push button so that it can't be pushed down, so it can't be pulled out. So now that we have the battery plugged into the inverter, let's go ahead and talk about what the inverter is capable of doing. What's really special about this machine is the fact that it can do 240 volt split phase power, which is gonna give you enough power to run your heavy loads such as an air conditioner, a dryer, or a stove, or appliances such as that. Never before have they been able to have a portable power station that can produce that kind of wattage and that kind of power at that kind of voltage and actually still portable. This is the minimum system here with just one battery because this inverter is capable of having five extra batteries underneath this inverter. And if that's not enough power, you can actually add up to three power inverters together to get 21,600 watts. That's competitive with most any big home standby generators. Now, one thing to take in consideration is you're gonna need the battery power behind it to make that thing last for a long duration. And each one of these batteries is rated at 6,100 watt hours. Now, for those out there that are new to the solar and power station game, a lot of people don't know the difference between watts and watt hours. A lot of these different terminologies get thrown around and it gets kind of confusing. So to make that kind of simple, just think of your wattage as the actual power that you're gonna be using, such as a 100 watt light bulb, and you add that up, that's your total wattage. Now the watt hours is actual capacity that's inside of the battery over a one hour period of time. Depending on how many watts you take away from that watt hour battery, that's how long it's gonna last. So if you were to take 3000 watts over an hour, that battery is gonna last about two hours. So you can do the math from that point forward to kind of figure out what it's gonna take. Now, one big difference between this and a gas generator is the fact that this actually can be sustainable. If the grid goes down and we actually have some major catastrophes going on to where we don't have natural gas, or if there's a problem with the propane delivery or something like that, this could actually keep going with the help of solar panels. Now this has two solar inputs, which can give you a total capacity of 5,600 watts. They have a high voltage and low voltage section for the solar panels, which we'll go into that here in just a second, along with the details of what it can do. And like I said, all that energy is stored right in these 6,100 watt hour batteries. Now these batteries do wear out over time. They're good for about 3,500 charge cycles, which is about nine and a half years and it's gonna have about 80% capacity at the end of that nine and a half years. Even with the 20% reduction, you're still at 4.9 kilowatt hours. So you're still at more watt hours than what most portable power stations you see on the market now. Now, one thing I've really liked about the EcoFlow's layout here is how simplistic it is. Right here on the left-hand side, we have the input wattage, and on the right side, we have the output wattage. We got clarification that we're running at 60 Hertz sine wave. We've got the Wi-Fi emblem right here, and right beside it would be the Bluetooth. In the middle, it tells us that we have one battery connected and it would read higher than that if there was more connected. In the middle is the state of charge for the battery. And down here at the bottom is an estimated time that the battery will last based off of how many watts that you're drawing off the battery. I'll throw up a screenshot of some of the other icons and stuff that you've got here on the display. This is a very large display measuring right over nine inches. Even though this power station is capable of running a whole home, they know that you're gonna possibly be using this out in your RVs, camping, and all of those other situations. And you may need a USB-C adapter, which it has two of those here on the front left-hand corner. These are rated at 100 watts a piece. And over here on the right, we have the USB-As, and these are rated right at 12 watts a piece for a total of 24 watts. 
Now for communications, down in the bottom left hand corner we have a USB-A 4G dongle that can be added to the system. This allows you to have cellular communications if you don't have Wi-Fi available and you want to remotely be able to control the unit. Otherwise you can use the Bluetooth while you're on site and you can control it without a dongle. Now on the front here we have these magnetic flip up covers which have a dust seal around them and they are removable. So to remove these you just put them at about a 90 degree angle, lift right up and they pop out. So to make things simple, we'll go ahead and remove these. So here in the front, we have two outlets that are 120 volts, 20 amp backup UPS, meaning there's about a 20 millisecond transfer speed. So if you lose power while it's being powdered off utility, you will have a 20 millisecond delay. Generally, that's not going to affect most computers. However, if you need to make absolutely sure you don't have any interruptions, you've got a 120 volt, 20 amp online UPS. There is no delay because there is no switching. It's constantly being powered right through off of the battery. So you're able to have full backup here. Now over to the right, we have a 120 volt, 30 amp online UPS system for the RV type style plug, which gives you 30 amp capacity at 120 volts. And off to the right here, we have the 120 volt, 240 volt, 30 amp plug, which is an L14-30, allowing you to have 240 or 120 volts this is where you're gonna get your maximum wattage out of the unit. Now here on the right hand side, we have our Anderson plug, which is rated at 12.6 volts at 30 amps of current. This allows you to hook up your low voltage appliances such as refrigerators and other 12 volt appliances. Then below that is our MPPT solar connection point. This gives us a range of 30 volts to 150 volts DC, 15 amp max, which allows you to bring in up to 1600 watts of power from solar. Below that is the ground screw for the chassis on the unit. To the right is our selectable speed switch for charging. We have fast on the left, which gives you 1800 watts of charging speed. And on the right hand side is selectable in the app. And finally down here at the very bottom is our 120 volt plug, which gives you the capability of charging at up to to 1800 watts and on our side cover here this flops straight down and then pushes in this is where your high voltage MPPT solar input is this is rated at 80 volts to 450 volts DC and up to 4,000 watts they have a integrated switch right here on the side that allows you to shut off the power and to isolate the system from it. Now, one complaint that I've seen on this is the fact that it's kind of difficult to remove these connectors. To get your fingers in there to release it is nearly impossible. That's why EcoFlow provides you a tool. So if you're wondering what this was on the bottom of your cart that came with the machine, you're actually able to go in there and put that in between the actual release mechanism and you're able to pull them out. Now for me, this is the power in out port that I've been using with my smart home panel two. Up till now, I haven't been able to use the front ports on the actual machine because everything I need is right here on this. This is where you're gonna get the most wattage transfer out of the machine. You're gonna get your fastest charging and you're gonna get your most power output out of right here. Now, of course you can get that out of the front plug, but this here is just so simple. It's, I don't have to do anything other than just plug it in and the switch kicks over. Now, this is also capable of doing EV charging. Now you can pick up a dongle that allows you to charge this with EV charging stations. And they also have a dongle for the generators, which will allow you to get the fastest charging possible. Now this can be charged with pretty much any regular generator that has a total harmonic distortion of less than 10%. So any halfway decent quality generator should be lower than that. Most of the home standby generators from Generac are right around 5%. Now my smallest generator is a inverter system which has very clean power, the same type of clean power that these inverter systems here have. So obviously that would be the best system for it, the least chances of having any spikes. Now the same way this battery hooks up right here, you're able to do the next battery down by opening up this port, sliding it in. You'll have another one of these if you have another battery. You're gonna plug it in there, and then on the next one, it'll go down below it on the right, and then another one below there on the left until you have a total of five batteries. Now, noise has always been a problem with most portable power stations out there, and that's definitely not gonna be something we're gonna have an issue with. Essentially, what they're using is an aluminum plate, and they're mounting all the components that get really hot onto that aluminum plate, and they're transferring that by conduction through the aluminum plate out to the heat sinks out here on the back side, and they're running a fan through it. This unit is rated for up to 2000 watts, whether it's being charged or discharged to not even need the fans to run. On my next video, I'm going to be doing testing that shows exactly how much noise this machine puts out. But I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. When I was running this thing at about 4600 watts nonstop for over 15 minutes, and then stopped it and checked it with the actual SPL meter, holding it not even this far away from the fans, 
I had about 41 dB. So this thing can be kept near a bedroom without any worries of keeping somebody awake at night. Now, as you can imagine, that system's gonna be really heavy if you happen to put five batteries on it. They do include this little coaster setup here. This is actually made out of metal, welded on here and here. They use corrugated uh, type plastic connections here. The wheels do have locking, so they keep them so they won't turn left and right, and it keeps them from rolling. Now they did include some rubber uh, feet that you can put on it if you don't want it to move at all. But for right now, this actually does a really nice job. Now they also have a two wheel cart for this machine that allows you to move the inverter and one battery. Uh, it allows you to kind of move over grass and other rough terrain. The main difference between that and a normal cart is it has clamp mechanisms to kind of clamp it down so they can't shift left and right. All right, we're finally to my favorite part the Smart Switch 2. If you look at this front cover here, my wife even thinks this thing looks awesome. It is a glass front with their logo on it. It's very attractive. It is NEMA 3 rated, which means it's rainproof. It has a dust shield in here on the inside panel that keeps all the dust and stuff out. So basically you can mount this outside on the outside of the house if you need to, or you can mount it in the inside of the house. The dimensions of this, which I'll put up above, allows you to mount this in between studs, or you can mount it externally on the wall like I do here. The bottom section here is not rated for outdoor use, but it is separatable from the top section here. They have four wing nuts in there and then you can run conduit from this to the actual switch mechanism. You can remotely mount this where it's convenient, whether it be in a closet or somewhere in the garage, wherever. To plug this in, it's simple as this. I grab my plug, plug it right here on the side, lock it in. It's got the same twist lock there to keep it locked. You heard it click. It already knows that it's connected. And right now we're ready to rock and roll. Now up here on top is the Wi-Fi antenna. Coming right down to here, we have our interlock switch. So this is the 100 amp circuit that I have coming into the transfer panel from the main breaker panel. This is my 50 amp supply from the generator. And here's my circuits for the house. Now EcoFlow provides you a total of 12 spaces here in this box, which I ended up using tandem breakers. As you'll notice, I had a 40 space box here and when I built the house and wired it, I ended up going hog wild with wire. I literally ran every individual thing on its own circuit. I mean, even the smoke alarms are on its own circuit. Each bedroom's on its own circuit. The lights are in their own circuit. So to say the least, I had a lot of extra breakers in here, whereas most people would double up several different rooms to the maximum capacity because it's cheaper for them to wire a house that way. I didn't care, I wanted it done right. Now, the way I did wire these up though to make sure that I didn't overload the circuitry here is I put like a heavy load with a light load. So like my furnace here and the living room. So the living room doesn't pull anything. The furnace has an ECM motor in it, so it's very efficient. Like my basement receptacles and my basement lights. There's no major loads there. South bed and kitchen west on another and then the heat pump here. Now this is a two and a half ton heat pump. This inverter system is rated for up to three ton air conditioner or heat pump. The way they are rating this maximum capacity of what kind of unit it can run, they're doing it off the locked rotor amps, LRA. If it has a locked rotor amps under 120 amps, then they say it can run it. Now, the thing you're gonna run into is when you have all these other circuits running, whether it be the furnace, the well, the well has quite an inrush. So when it kicks on, it spikes way up there. Same thing with my heat pump. When we go into the next video that I did where I showed me installing this and actually putting things together, I actually did my inrush values on it and the heat pump actually pulls about 52 amps for instantaneous second. That's where the inverter system down here that can run 10,800 watts for 10 seconds is able to handle that kind of load. Now there is things that you can do to your air conditioner such as adding a hard start or a soft start to make that starting amperage lower which will allow you to run you know, a bigger system. But here's the thing you gotta keep in mind. My heat pump there pulls about 2000 watts. And with this battery being 6000 watt hours, I could only run this thing for three hours and that's assuming I don't power the furnace. So you're gonna drain your system really quick. If you're wanting to run a dryer or a water heater that's electric, you're gonna drain it down really quickly. Now, if you have a mini split, those are pretty energy efficient. They start off very slow, they're inverter based. So you can get away with quite a few different things with that. But all the technology here is in this switch here. And like I said, to keep this video short, because I know attention spans can get lost when you just rattle on and rattle on about all the different specifications, I'm gonna split this video up into at least two segments. Theoretically, I might be even four. But we're gonna have two dedicated videos where it's purely all in on the machinery. We went over all the specs and what the system can do. Now we're gonna go over what the transfer switch can do. Because when this is hooked up to the inverter system, 
all your control settings are in the actual transfer switch, the Smart Home Panel 2. This Smart Home Panel 2 is what I feel makes the whole system worth it. I don't want to have to get up and flip manual transfer switches and stuff like that. If you're going to invest this amount of money into a system, my feeling is go all the way in and just get the transfer switch. Otherwise, you might as well grab a gas generator because you're still going to have to go outside, hook it up, run the wires and all that stuff. It's still a big hassle. Now, granted, it's not as bad as what the generator is, but it, it can be a pain in the butt. What we're going to do here is we're going to emic the power going out. This is my main breaker. Below that is my interlock switch. This interlock lock switch is the same as what we have over here, but this is what I had before installing the Smart Panel 2. This allowed me to hook up a gas generator or any kind of generator so that I was able to safely control the system. This right here is probably the cheapest way that you can put in a whole house connections point because when you install this little piece of metal here, it does not allow the generator to turn on. Right now that's blocking it from going on. So what has to happen is to have to turn off the main first shove that up and then you can flip it over. All right, so I have the studio lights turned off. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn off the master breaker for the whole house. You're gonna hear a quick click and a little bit of a blink. Here we go. That's how fast it transfers over, that little dinky blink. In my testing that I'm gonna be doing on the next video, I have an oscilloscope hooked up. We're gonna be showing the waveform pattern which I'll go ahead and throw out there now. It's flawless. Right now, we're able to flip the generator on if it was running and then we could power and charge our batteries because currently I don't have any solar. The solar panels that I do have are portable solar panels. For right now, we're running on the actual battery system. As you can see here, we're running right about 948 watts. Nothing's coming into the system right now to charge it because we don't have any power from the grid. All right, you can see down here we have a green light. That is a diagnostic light. It will blink red, it'll blink green or solid and you've got a set of codes that go along with that. Over here we have the grid light, which is red. That tells you that the grid is dead. And you have an emergency power station switch here, which if you hit that, it disconnects everything away from the transfer switch and kills everything. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when this thing is to be installed, EcoFlow wants you to have a licensed certified electrician to install it. That way you know that everything is done to code, that if there's any permits or anything like that that needs to be done, they can all be done above board and you don't have to find out later that you did something wrong, there's no damage done to the transfer switch because EcoFlow does back all this stuff up with some really good warranties. So the battery and the actual inverter system has a five-year warranty on it. The transfer switch, the Smart Home Panel 2, has 10 year warranty on it. I did speak with my representative and I asked who pays for the shipping because that battery weighing 116 pounds is gonna cost a couple bucks to ship. Same thing with the 70 pound inverter system. EcoFlow takes care of all of that. EcoFlow also has a special deal for people that live in Texas and in California that allows uh, someone to come out and do some analysis of your house and what you need. So check their website out for that. Down below the video, you're gonna see a more button. Click on that and you'll be able to see links to everything that you're gonna to wanna to know. I'm also gonna have discount codes down below there to save yourself some money. EcoFlow has a bunch of different sales going on. Now, the way I originally wired this up, so I have a total of three of these generator inlet boxes. So I've got one of these in the garage, I got one in the barn, and I got one inside the house here. You're able to hook it up the old fashioned way. So I need to turn this main back on. Now for me to show you how to wire this up without having to purchase the smart panel switch is pretty simple. This will not work independently, so we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna disconnect our power wire there, and we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it from down here just in case. You cannot turn on any of the outlets here on the front unless that cable that I just unhooked is unhooked. Just like with a normal gas generator, you're able to take your plug, plug it in, twist lock it, hook it up to your 240 volt outlet. Right now, I've got the AC power on. Now, that is one thing about this uh, unit that some people ask about. If it goes completely dead and you're not home, will it come back on when you're done? They do have that as an option in the app. It's called always on. So yes, you can do that and that option is turned on. Now this thing is technically powering my actual generator box. You can see here that I have a green light which tells me I have power on this box. So the power goes out. You can do this a couple different ways. So we come over here, same thing we had before. The power goes out, it's gonna go dark like that. Now these lights are running on a actual battery station. Now that we turned off this 200 amp breaker, I'm able to lift that plate up. Now I can pull the generator over to there. 
and we should get our power back on like that. Well, right now we're running the easy sleazy way. Right now we're able to power the box just like normal, which in reality, what this here would be is you'd have a sub panel box over here, or theoretically, you wouldn't even have to have a sub panel box, but most people what they'll do is they'll have a sub panel box, which allows you to send a set of dedicated circuits here like you have here of your most essential circuits. What I did before was I actually came through here and marked off anything that was high amperage, like my barn, my dryer, well pump, stuff like that, or what have you. And I was went through and it just shut those things off. If I didn't need it, I just basically had to do it manually. As you can see, it's so much nicer to have it already set up. Power goes out, boom, it flips over. I ain't got to think about nothing. You know, I'm going to get at least a few hours out of this thing. It could be as much as six hours. I pull a lot of power with this house. So when you look at my app, you can see how much I pull. And there's sometimes when I run the actual AC, I can get well over 2,500 watt hours easily in one day. So it's going to take a lot of battery power. So with me not having solar to offset some of that power, I've got to have the generators as backup. What's nice is, is the generators just ran and ran and ran for no good reason when there was not much of a load. I'll be able to use those generators to charge this up really quickly. Then I can shut them off and go back into stealth mode because let's face it, a lot of people that are buying these are trying to prep and they want to be ready for bad things. If you're the only house with the lights on, I can guarantee you people are going to come knocking. So it's one of them things you just want to keep things quiet. That's how you can do the transfer panel the cheapest way possible. You got an interlock switch here, which I can put a link down in the description below. The Ultra can be hooked up to a 50 amp hub. So if you have two of these and you don't want to spend the money on the panel, you can get the 50 amp hub, which then allows you to get the 14,000 watts, almost 15,000 watts into a 50 amp hub. And you can still do the same thing without having the Smart Home Panel 2. The Smart Home Panel 2 is pretty much the Cadillac of the whole design. You can hook up three different inverters. I mean, it's pretty much got all the features in it and I think it's somewhere around $1,700 to $1,800, and it's usually cheaper than that when you get some of the discount codes and stuff like that. Otherwise, you can get a dedicated little transfer box that's manual. They run anywhere from $300 and something to usually $500 or $600. That's your options on hooking this thing up and to save a little bit of money. Uh, one more thing that I forgot to mention on the batteries, it is rated to go down to negative four degrees. So the batteries do have an option in the app called battery preconditioning. There's a little heater integrated into the batteries. So when it gets down to about 32 degrees, this little heater comes on and helps warm the batteries up so the chemistry can, can accept the charge and discharging into the batteries without any damage. Now, since we're running a 230 volts, we are able to charge this thing with 120 volts. It's called X Factor. You can actually input up to 1800 watts in there while this thing is outputting up to 7200 watts. That is a really neat feature that they've got built into it. What you could do is you either would get that dongle to charge it with a bigger generator, which with the way I have mine set up with the smart home panel, I'm able to charge it up to the maximum wattage into it, which is right around, I think, 6400 watts. This is a comparison between the Power Insight controller and the traditional app that you're able to use on your phone or iPad. It does work also with Android. Here is your actual Smart Panel 2. If we want to go into the Ultra, we go to Ultra. If we want to go into Ultra, we go into Ultra. Here we're able to see the same thing at the same time. We can turn outlets on and off. We can set our energy savings modes. We can schedule tasks, time of use, self-powered. Same thing over here. We're able to go in there and go into how many watts we've been using, weeks, months, all that same thing can be done over here on this. After hitting the nut icon, you can come in here and you can share the device, adjust the timeout of when it shuts down. Same thing can be done over here. A lot of those features here cannot be done here because this is going to be for quick references full-blown setups are going to be done in your app. You're able to adjust your secondary charge speed for between 500 and 7200 watts. This is also your X-Fusion adjustment right here, showing that it's enabled. None of that's in this one here because you really don't need it. This is where your currency and your rate is calculated at. So if you put it in here, you can actually figure out your savings and such by actually putting in the correct information here. I also mentioned earlier about the AC always on. If you wanted to know what that was, we mentioned that. That's if the thing goes down and comes back on it will automatically start back up for you. The type of operating mode that you're in here, this is where you adjust the type of mode that you're in. You're self-powered, which things there that you can adjust, type of system that you have, same thing with time of use. There you go, you can look at those screenshots. 
and you can adjust that up and down depending on the type of mode that you're running in. Once again, none of this will be set if you're hooked up to the Smart Panel 2 because that's gonna be controlled out of the Smart Panel 2 settings. The power conditioning that we talked about earlier is right here. This is where if you're gonna be uh, storing the system in a colder environment, it'll automatically start warming the batteries up. This is also where you can adjust your limits of how much it charges and discharges. They recommend right around 90% to get the longest battery life. Your firmware and stuff is right down here at the bottom. It can automatically update. And right now, currently, this is the firmware that I'm on. They just had an update again. They've been constantly updating things, which is awesome because that means they're on top of it. Your logs right here tell you what kind of things have happened while you're away. Kind of gives you an overall view of what's all going on, where the power is going. This is your inputs. Here is your outputs. Now we're gonna switch over to the Smart Panel 2. So same thing here. We're gonna go into the Smart Panel 2 over here. So we're gonna see pretty much the same thing. You can see the 2.73 and the 2.73 going in and going out. Same thing here going in and going out. Generally, this is about the only thing you're really gonna need at a glance, any of those special settings you're gonna do from the app. Here's your 12 circuits. You're able to go in here and look and see what you're actually pulling. Same thing here, click on circuits. Here's the same things. You got heat pump and you got all the way down to circuit 11 here. With this being a 12.9 inch display, you're able to get everything on there. If you wanna go by blocks type design, you can go by blocks here. If you wanna go by list, you can do that also like that. Down here at the bottom, you are able to go into these icons here and you can adjust your operating modes just like you've seen on the other. So there is some settings here that you can't adjust without having to get your phone out. Same thing with the home. It tells you how much power you've been using over the week, month, and year. Both of them have this feature. You're able to look at each one of those things and graph them out, which makes it kind of convenient so that you can see where your power's going. Like I said before, when you're connected to the Smart Panel 2, this is where you're gonna set pretty much everything up because the front panel and everything on the Ultra is gonna be defeated and it's gonna be all ran from here because you're running all the power straight into the smart panel. This is where you're gonna set up your home settings, what type of grid, your maximum amp draw into it. When a storm is coming, it's based off of your area code. It will automatically charge the batteries up to 100%. So if you're using solar and things like that, it's gonna run the batteries all the way up to 100%. So if the power does go out, you've got the most chance of surviving with the batteries without having to run a generator or something else. Your electrical rate settings is how it's gonna calculate what your actual savings is. The operating mode that I use on average is scheduled task. For me, I set up the charging here. Now you can do the self-powered, which if you wanna hit pause, you can see exactly what that means. A better look at scheduled tasks, you can look at that right there. And same thing with time of use, you can read that right there. And at any time, you guys can pause that and read it. For the sake of making the video move along quickly, we're gonna go ahead and go on through there. Now, one thing I did like about this section here under the circuits, you're able to click on it. You can see where everything's at here, but you also have an editing spot here. So when you click on that, that's where you can change your name, tell how many amps it's gonna actually pull, whether it's 10 amps to as much as 60. The appliance type here, you can actually pick the different icons so that it matches what it is. So at a glance, you'll be able to actually see what it is. And you can turn that section on and off right here with that blue button. If you hit that, it's gonna ask you, are you sure? So if your kids are blasting a stereo or the wife's taking a long shower, you can go right in there and kill it, and you can make them very angry. So here's one last section I wanna cover, which is the outage strategy. Go into setup, there's my must have. For me, I've got the furnace and living room on there because that's my TV and my actual heating appliances. Next is gonna be my garage and small bath because that is my refrigerators and the bath doesn't pull anything. Same thing with another fridge and the routers because I wanted to stay in communications. Now you can scroll over here to nice have circuits, which is our well pumps. I can adjust that part right there to anything I want. So if I want it to kick out at 0% to as much as 90, I can do that. These are gonna be the items that are gonna be shedded as we get down to that last 20%. Say I'm not home to start the generator. I wanna make sure my food is not spoiling and that I'm able to communicate with the device. So that's why I've got the routers and stuff like that on the backups up until about now. And finally, non-priority circuits is the heat pump. Like I said, that thing's very large, it's gonna pull a lot. So unless you have solar and you have extra batteries, that's gonna be one of those things that you're probably gonna to wanna to shed. Once you're done, click okay. On this one here, yeah, you can turn the circuit on and off from here, along with checking uh, the actual usage, but I do not see where you can change the names. Like I said, it's a little limited here on this one here, as far as being able to change names and stuff, but you can turn it on and off and check your usage over here underneath the circuits. In all reality, if this is gonna be accessible to people, kids, family members, people you don't want touching it, it's best that it doesn't have all those small details so that they're not messing with things. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this section of the video. Like I said, I just wanted to go over some of the basics of what it had to offer, whether or not it's something you'd be interested in. That was the whole reason for this particular video for my first one. 
there's just too many things to cover and cram it all into one. Most of these videos that do that are 30 to 40 minutes. I usually try not to go more than 22, and even then, people tend to dive off after 10 minutes or so. We are going to be back with another video that is going to show you how I installed this system. Like I said, I am a heating, air conditioning, refrigeration technician. We have electricians, so I am able to run underneath the licensing of my company. In this area where I live at, there is no inspections, so there is no permits. We're pretty free around where I'm at. So like I said, that's why you need to go through the licensed electrician if you're gonna to wanna to install one or just run at your own risk otherwise. So when we come back on that next video though, we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna show you how I wired this up. We're gonna show the testing. We're gonna make sure that the system actually puts out the wattage that it actually is claiming. We're gonna make sure that it uh, doesn't have any weirdo bugs. I have thermal imaging cameras. I've got all kinds of stuff that I'm going to do on this system. Like I said, we ran the oscilloscope, all that stuff. We're gonna do some crazy testing to make sure the system actually does what it says that it's gonna do because for the price of it, it better. And so what I've seen so far, EcoFlow is such a quality product. I don't think we have a whole lot to worry about. I think I covered most of everything on this video. If I didn't, I'll cover it on the next one. I appreciate you guys taking the time. So if you wanna see that next video, it's important that you subscribe and click that notification bell. That way you're notified on that next video. If you're interested in some of the heating air conditioning videos that I do and some of those generator videos, I have those listed up there. This video has gone quite long, and so there's not a lot of comparisons on this video to the Generac generators. So we're gonna be doing that also on the next video. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. If you would, leave any comments or questions down below. I am a smaller channel that really enjoys doing what I do, and I actually try to respond to every comment and question out there. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time, 